The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 24th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Let's have an extraordinary weekend as well. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But if you've got a question and you can't call in, we've got your back. Send me an email, send it off early, and send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of green when it comes to all the U.S. indices, as well as the sectors now inside of the S&P 500. Dow's up 123. S&P's up 40. NASDAQ is up 196. Russell's up 20. Semi's up 96. Tranny's up 55. Gold's up 3 bucks. Silver's up 22 pennies. Lights recruit is trading down 50 cents. Natural gas down 7 cents. 30-year treasury is flat at 116.26. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside, it is Decker's Outdoor. About a 13% move. That's 115 bucks. 57 bucks for micro strategy, nearly 4% super micro, 5% or 44 bucks. Asthma Holdings, 21 bucks, 2%. Lab Research, 20 bucks, 2% there. To the downside, the Shakers into it, down 52 bucks, nearly 8%. Workday, down 14%, 35 bucks. Service Now, 12 bucks, a little bit less than 2%. Mercado Libre, off 7 bucks, half a percent. And Verastem is down seven bucks. That's a 62% move. It's trading out at 455. I hope nobody is holding any of those shares out there. So, what do we want to take a look at out here? So, let's begin with. Let's go take a look at the intraday charts first for the S&P 500. So, we're going to switch screens out here. So I can show you what's going on in intraday. Because at this stage, the buyers that have been lined up in the morning, they seem to have gone on vacation early. So that would be good for the bulls. Or are they going to unleash come between maybe uh, 12 and 2 o'clock this afternoon? Why would Steve even say that or suggest that? Well, if we look at that very left-hand corner bottom, you're going to see that we are now in bar number 9 on an hourly basis. Now, we know that on a TD9 count top, the high – has to come on either bar 8, 9, or the bar following 9. This bar is going to complete at 12 noon. That says that are going to confirm at 12 noon at TD9 count top, but the completion of that pattern could be 1. If you look into your upper right, you'll see the 2-hour time frame chart. We are in bar number 8 right now. This bar completes at 12 noon. Bar number 9 would complete at 2, and of course the bar following 9, not till 4 o'clock. So on the 2-hour time frame chart out there, it says you could get a top in between the time frame of between 10 and the end of the day out there. So how are you going to know whether it's a top or not? I would say focus on the 60-minute time frame chart. Those are the only two charts that I see at this moment in time. Not that the 15 and the 10-minute charts can't get there, it's just we're not there right now. Um, and so I would watch that 60-hour, 60-hour. I'd watch a 60-hour chart for sure. Boy, now that would keep you that would keep you sleepy. You want to watch the 60-minute time frame chart for the ES. Now, we want to see if there's any kind of synergy out there, meaning what do the 60-minute charts look like for the other equity future contracts as well. We can take a look at that. If we look at the rest of the charts out here for the ES, meaning what do they tell us? Well, the daily time frame chart. 
price is back inside his profile. It suggests that yesterday's move to the downside was a false breakdown move. Number two, price is trading above its green oscillator and change line and within its profile. So what price should do, it's a bullish condition, by the way, uh, price is likely, if the rally does continue, it should go target the 53.49 level. That's the top of that daily profile. Again, we want to keep our eyes on the 60-minute uh, time frame chart, at least at this moment in time. Five-hour chart looks like it wants to gun for 53.31. The uh, two-hour or the four-hour chart is already right now trade above resistance. That's its oscillator and change line. So I'd say 53.31 should be in the bag out there. Don't know what happens above that level. Uh, of course, you could get up to that 53.49 area. Again, keep an eye on that 60-minute time frame chart that's going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top at uh, 1 p.m. today. Okay, so what else do we want to look at? Well, I mentioned the 60-minute charts. So let's do this here. Let's go down. I have no idea what they're going to show. I don't have these charts open yet. So we have to wait just a moment or two as soon as I get there uh, for these charts to populate. But we're going to look at all the other 60-minute equity future charts. And when there's synergy, it makes that call of a potential top or bottom much easier out here when there's no synergy maybe one has it and the others don't it you know it becomes somewhat uh, complicated uh, so we're waiting now the es mini you can see the 60 minute chart we've already discussed that ad nauseum now the 60 minute time frame chart for the nq also in bar number well so it's an hour behind so that's helpful to us so if this is going to go now not that it can't go ahead and confirm or, or complete a uh, t9 count top on bar number eight but odds would favor that it doesn't top until, or doesn't top, doesn't confirm the pattern until 1 p.m. That says that that pattern really wouldn't complete until 2 p.m. out there. We don't see the TD9 counts for the other instruments, the Dow or the Russell 2000. So it's really going to be about the ES mini, the 60-minute charts for the uh, ES and the NQ. That doesn't mean you can't pay attention to the other intraday charts out there. It's just these are the two that have the uh, tops out there. So that's one area to watch. What else do we want to watch today? Now, that's a great question because I've asked it of myself. You might not think it's a great question, but let's go take a look what Stevie thinks is a great question. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday, which was the semiconductor charts. And here what I've got is a semiconductor chart next to the SMH. And you can see two completely different patterns. Why? Because they have different holdings, different weightings. I mean, they eventually have some of the same holdings. You're just uh, reconfigured differently out there. And that's really important to know because you'd hate to trade the SMHs off of the socks out there. But which one is the one that really has the uh, biggest influence on whether markets make tops or bottoms? Now, that's an excellent question, and I do not know the answer to that. Do you know the answer to that? Maybe sometime this weekend I'll try to figure that one out. But that's not what's so important out here. So in the semis, it's going to go ahead and complete the semiconductor index. will complete a TD9 count top today. This is the bar following bar number nine. Now, what that tells us, I don't know whether today's going to be the high or if it was yesterday was the high out there. Yesterday's high, by the way, is at 52, 55, 64. Whatever that high is. If price starts trading above that come Tuesday and closes above that, that tells you you don't have any kind of a topping pattern. Why would that be a possibility? Well, because if price closes above this level here, that is 52.1783. That is the high of bar number eight of a TD9 count. If price closes above that, right now we're at 52.30, the number 52.1783. It closes above that, the weekly chart will negate its top, and it does not have a top at that point in time. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll finish a look at the SMHs as soon as we get back from this break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. I'm uh, kind of stuck on some uh, charts here. Uh, my, I was just trying to repair something during that break, and the system here is uh, still struggling to uh, to open up a couple of charts here. I was going to try to delete them, but that's not even working out here. So hopefully this resolves itself momentarily, and we get back to the SMHs. But as long as I'm on this chart here, and you can see them, this chart here, this we're looking at the weekly charts right now for the uh, indices out here. And, and this is where the real rub uh, comes, so to speak. So in the case of the Dow, the Dow still has its top in place out here. Uh, it's got a wave number seven top. Well, no, hold on. That's going to, let's see here. Was last week's high the high? Last week was at 40.051. This week, 40.077. No, so, so I, I must not have that on switching over. So we don't have any kind of a top that's in place out here, but you could get a wave number seven. Now, last week, price negated its Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. That's the Dow. So even though it's been on the daily time frame, you know, it's been somewhat horrible, so to speak. Uh, it does not have a top in place. It could form a wave number seven top, and it could do that come uh, next uh, at the end of next week. If we take a look at the S&P 500 on a weekly basis, it negated its Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. It does not have any kind of top in place out here. It's trading above that green oscillator and change line. As long as that condition remains, and that's up at the 5205 level out there, that suggests the S&P 500 longer term or intermediate term is what I really should say should continue to rally. The NDX 100 on a weekly basis, we have the same set of signals out there. No top. Prices. In fact, it's lost its road momentum indicator signal out there. So it's just simply bullish and suggests it wants to trade higher. The Russell 2000 still has a weekly TD9 count top that, com that confirmed back on March the 29th. We talked about the SOX, how it would negate its TD9 count top. Excuse me, with a close today about 52.17. The transports have really been in a sideways consolidation. I'd say taking us back into December. 
of uh, last year out there. So just a sideway, but we do know 16,258. That's the TD9 count breakdown level is a key area of resistance. If price ever closed above that, that would be a bullish outcome. NASDAQ composite, much like the NDX 100, no top in sign out here, negated its topping signals last week. And with regard to the New York Stock Exchange, the same thing. Last week, it negated its TD9 count top out there. So the weekly charts are saying, you know, don't get too caught up just yet into thinking the markets are going to crash or truly head a lot lower out there. So that's what's going on there. I want to go back just to the SMH just to provide you at least with that number to be watching at day's end. And on the SMH, if it closes above its TD9 count high, that high is 239.14. We're at 244 and a quarter right now. But if it closes the day above 239.14, it does no longer it no longer has a top. Yes, the uh, daily is in wave number seven. Again, that's going to continue. That the earliest that could be confirmed would be the end of the day on Tuesday out there. So you do have a top, in, a potential top inside the SMHs. You've got one that's certainly inside the daily time frame. But the weeklies are so watch the close for that for that area out there. It should provide us with a clue as to what its real intent is, not the day-to-day -day, uh, activity out there. So hope that helps you out just with regard to a general overview of the uh, markets out there. And because oftentimes we do that, we don't take a look at the weekly chart. Yet the weekly charts right now are quite frankly the ones that we really need to be paying attention to to get a better feel for what the market is expressing to you and I. Now, with regard to what the market is expressing, let's go take a look at ticker symbol RTX. This is for Alton. And RTX is, uh, God, I should know it off the top of my head, but I don't. It's trading right now at 106.15 as RTX Corporation. God, that's a real toughie there, Steve-O. Uh, in any event, RTX Corporation has a Rosemont Dominicator top that was formed with a bearish shooting star, a bearish engulfing candle back on May 13th. I believe the question is Alton is saying volume is drying up on its ways to the highs. Is that anything to worry about? So yesterday's volume on this instrument, 5.7 million shares, day before about 3.6. That swing point that we talked about has volume of only 6 million shares. So I don't really see it as truly drying up. You know, you had 6 million shares. You were going into it yesterday with um, 5.7. That's close enough to 6 for me. So I don't think this is a volume issue. The issue is it's got a top and it's got resistance at the oscillator and change line, but it's still green. So conditions here are neutral. It would get a little bit more neutral to bullish if price could close above 106.57. So what does the weekly time frame chart show us? So what we have out here, you know, I don't know if there was enough of retracement from its TD9 count top that formed the week of February 9th down to the low that was put in on February 23rd. It doesn't look like to me that that's a 0.382 retracement. So for me, very difficult to consider that to be a A to B equals CD pattern. Doesn't really matter because we don't have a top. Now, what you could get this week is a confirmed wave number seven top. Let's go ahead and pull this up open here. So last week was wave number seven. That's coming off of the accounts from the October 13th low out there. So you'd still have a top on the daily. You'd have then a confirmed top on the weekly. But if we notice that on the weekly chart, price is trading about profile resistance as well as its green oscillator and change line. So even though we say it's a top and even though it's towards a triple topish type area out there, um, it's neutral for the weekly time frame. The volume that it's really going into is the volume from back here on January 27. Now that had 27 million shares. So you are going into that swing point with lighter volume. But I would stay tuned because I don't have a, that. That didn't indicate that. That, if anything, that that was not a a. Um, what Steve, you want to say? That was not any any topping signal. That's a high volume high. And if there's one thing that Tom taught us all and teaches us all is that if you have a high volume high, it's going to get tested. So I would say out here, even though you got that wave number seven top on the weekly time frame that's going to form, it's really giving us signals that it should get up and test that high, and that high being 108.84 out there. Let's take a look at the monthly chart, see if there's anything else out here that we need to be concerned with. Well, you'd love to see price continue to trade above 104.91. That's a monthly TD9 count breakdown level out there, so that's a bullish signal. The monthly chart has volume of 103 million in January of 2023. 
And this month so far, we are at 100. So on a monthly basis, so I'm glad you asked about the volume because Alton, uh, so here's what, here's, here's the lesson for today. Don't just focus on daily volume, focus on what's going on on the weekly and the monthly as well. Just like we took a look at those weekly charts and sometimes they get neglected when we do a show like this where so many people are interested in what's happening next out there or what's going to happen by Friday. And, and, and that's fine. Because uh, we can use this platform. You you give me the request. I will go investigate it uh, for you. That's really how this works. So in the case of RTX, I would say, Alton, it's pushing into the high volume high with volume. And that is exactly what you want to see. So is there any concern there? There's always concern in the market. But right now you have all the good signals as far as I can see. Let's go to our next question. It's coming in from a, a buddy of mine who is in NVIDIA from way down south out there. But NVIDIA, Steve-O, is going to go ahead and uh, form a TD9 count top today. It'll complete that pattern come Tuesday. That suggests we should or could be ready for a move lower. And a move lower would be nothing more than naturally just pulling back to test support. In the case of NVIDIA right now, short of any new profile forming, would be down at the 972 level. But if we look at the weekly time frame chart, does that daily TD9 count chart have us being concerned? The answer there is absolutely not. It's negated any kind of topping pattern that hit it in place. And the same thing with the monthly. So longer term with regard to NVIDIA, folks, it has more upside to go. More upside to go. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We come back. We're going to take a look at Apple, Workday, Intel, and Silver. Be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month. So trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, 
you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Bob and Spokane wants to take a look at Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. ARWR is the uh, ticker symbol. It's got a nice road's momentum indicator bottom with price trade above profile resistance. Resistance was at 2377. It's traded above its oscillator and change line, which is slightly above that. What this suggests to you and I, Bob, is that price should go target its TD9 count breakdown level, and that's up at 2742. The weekly chart has a profile that formed three weeks ago. It is bullish in structure. And what you'd really love to see is trading at about 2519 right now. You'd like to see it close above the exact number, maybe 2517, 2508. A close above 2508 would be a bullish outcome because, one, you'd be above the center of its uh, weekly profile, but two, and more importantly than that, you would be above the oscillator and change line. And we can see that has acted as resistance since March 15th on a weekly basis. So watch that 2508. The further you can get away from 2508, the more that that suggests that over time, this wants to run up to 3069. Again, 2742 is going to be a level of resistance. If he can clear that, 3069. Now, the monthly chart says, well, hold on a minute here, Steve O. I'm consolidating with inside my weekly, uh, my monthly profile, and I have a resistance level that Bob and Spokane might want to know about as well. What is that area? And I have to say area because that number is going to change. But right now, it's at 26.85. So let's just call it 27 bucks out there. You're, and that says, okay, the daily of 27.42 remains as the target. So in the week, that weekly oscillating change line would move higher as price would move higher. So it looks to me like ARWR certainly wants to get to 27.42. And if you can close above that weekly oscillator and change line, that will increase the odds of that happening. So, Bob, hope that helps you out and have a fabulous weekend uh, and Friday as well. Let's go to our next request. That's coming from G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. And G-Man wants to, and, Bo and Bob was also inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, G-Man wants to take a look at Apple. So we take a look at Apple. What do we know about it? Well, it negated its TD9 count top, and it did it in about three-day time period. The TD9 count top actually completed on the trading day of May the 15th, and it was negated on May the 20th out there. Now we have price that is trading with inside its profile. It's a bearish structured profile out there. I trade above its green oscillator and change line, GMAM. So this should go target the high uh, or the resistance of that uh, profile level at 191.10. It looks to me like that is the outcome. Now, Apple, if you enclose the week above profile, which is at 189.83, that would be a bullish signal out there. And that would suggest, you know, at least that 191.10 level. And if you can close above that, then we're back off to the highs from uh, back on May 22nd. And that's at 192.82. Now, volume on that candle is 36 million shares. We haven't gotten up to it yet today, but in two hours of trading, Apple has traded 14 million shares, 14, 28, 38, 42, we're going into, wow. So Apple is potentially moving into its daily swing point with volume. So what you'd love to see it actually do today, G-Man, I don't know if you're bullish or bearish out there. Um, if you're bullish, what you'd love to see it do today uh, is uh, close into the 190, above 190.27. If it does that and the volume uh, maintains itself, don't know whether it will or not, with it being a holiday and uh, weekend that we're coming into out here. But if it does close inside there with volume, then that tells us, well, certainly it gets up to that 191.10 level, but more likely it's going to go test that high out there. Uh, we covered the weekly, the monthly chart. There's not much here in Apple for us to review. So I hope that provided you with the information. So that would be a gift from the trading gods bullish. Well, perfect. So you know the levels to watch. And right now things look pretty good. I'd really keep my eye on the, I'm not so worried about the swing point, because you got volume, you know, that's moving higher, and really be watching that weekly profile level. So you'd really love to see this close above that 189.83 level out there. If it doesn't, 
you know, then I'm not so sure. Then then we've got this consolidation uh, pattern that's out there. So, G-Man, have a, uh, a fabulous weekend as uh, well. Uh, GTE wrote in, would like to take a look at Workday. We also had somebody inside the Tiger's Den who wanted to take a look at Workday. Now, inside the Tiger's Den, it was Jody, and uh, Joey wanted to uh, take a look at Workday from a short standpoint. Well, the question is, would you chase this short? So let's see what's going on in the daily time frame. Other than the fact that it gapped down, it has a rodentum indicator signal. That just tells us it needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom out there. doesn't mean that it will do that. So on a daily time frame chart, there's an A to B equals CD pattern out here. In fact, what I probably will do uh, for you, Joe, is uh, move over to my black background charts because then we can start drawing in the A to B equals CD patterns and I can give you some additional price targets. A price target, though, on the uh, weekly time frame chart is going to be 204.78. I don't know where it looks to me like the A to B equals CD pattern would be much below that level. Now, 204.78, it's a 225 right now. You know, that's the potential reward, but where's the risk on this type of a uh, trade out there? So for that, we might have to look. I don't know what we'd look at just yet off the top of my head. On a monthly time frame, let's talk about where price is likely headed to. So where price is likely headed to, so at least you've got that. Uh, so that would be your target zone. Again, that 204.78 on the weekly and 212.94 on the monthly chart. So now let's go take a look at Workday. Let's go switch over to our black background charts out here, see what else we can see. Let's actually get Workday up on our screens, W-D-A-Y. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the weekly chart. So let's take a look and see if that is an A to B equals CD pattern. No, I just want to make sure that the retracement, you know, is pretty close to a 0.382 retracement out there. And the answer is it's 0.32. So I'm going to say that's close enough for me. So we had 204.78 as a breakout level, and we got 193.52, and we're going to take out that swing point with volume on a weekly basis. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern, 193.52, 204.78. Let's go take a look at the daily time frame. We probably have that same pattern, but I just want to make sure, because we could have a different A to B equals CD. So the high is going to be the high from um, February 26. And really what I'd be using here. For this pattern, since we've already covered that weekly, is I'd use the low from March 5th as our B point. And was this a 0 0.382 retracement? Where's the high? Is it this candle? That's 280 and change. This is 279. Yeah. So here is the B point. And what we can see is we are below the one-to-one -one level. We're towards 1.272. So a bullish reversal candle, even though you've got a gap to the downside, would generate a buy the D point pattern out there. Um, the next price target on the daily time frame is 218. So we got 218. We've got 204. We've got uh, 212. And we've got on the weekly chart 193 out there. Those are the levels. So what you're going to have to really do from a short standpoint, would probably be to try to sell some type of intraday rally. And that's not likely to take place today. That's a 65-minute chart. I'll just go take a look at a 15-minute time frame chart and see what we've got there, if we've got any kind of a signal. So on a 15-minute chart, it'd be nice if it gave us a TD9. It hasn't given us really a whole lot out there. So And we're trading below profile. So, you know, do you do you jump on this and take a ride the train? And... Uh, I, I can't answer that question. That's 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 your risk reward uh, uh, profile that you've got it set up. But I have given you the price targets there, both GTE and Joe D. So I hope that helps you out with regard to setting up your potential trade. We come back to this uh, break. We're going to take the Intel, Silver, IWM, and MSTR. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We've got the charts for Intel up on our screen right now. This is for uh, GTE as well. So we take a look at uh, Intel. It formed a nice Roachmentum indicator bottom back here on May 8th. That set up a swing point as well. That swing point generated volume of 63 million shares. Now, yesterday it was tested. It was not rejected with 62 million shares. So there's similar, lighter, a little bit lighter, but similar type volume. Now, today... You're testing it so far in two hours of trading, 13 million. So we could say 39, 40 million or so testing that swing point. So right now it appears that Intel is going to test and reject the swing point, the high of that swing point from May the 8th out there. And if you can't bust them the downside, you try to bust them the upside. Well, the potential problem here is that price yesterday closed below its bullish structured daily profile. And if price does not get back above 31.39 at day's end, it's possible that 3165, that's the center of that bullish structure profile would be where a counter trend move would end out there. If price can close above that, then we'd be looking to move to 3242 out there. So that's what I'd be. So looks to me like it wants to rally. Looks to me like it wants to go target the 3139 to 3165 level. And that's from the daily time frame chart. The month, or the weekly time frame chart shows a confirmed by the D point pattern. That formed last week with that bull sash candle. Now, what price is doing as we speak right now, it's trading below the bottom of its profile, which is at 3130 or 3084. You'd love to see this close the day back above 3130. If it does that, well, that gets us back to the bottom of the profile. You won't really know much until you get to 3165 to see how price behaves. But if it does get above that, 3242 at 3443 would bear where it would be where price is headed to. The monthly time frame chart says I'm headed to 2497. The only way we get that signal confirmed is if we get a close below uh, 2973. That's the bottom of that by the D point pattern that formed uh, last week inside on a weekly time frame chart out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Intel. Hope that provided with the information you were looking for. John C. would like to take a look at Hi Ho Silver. So let's get to that multi set of uh, time frame uh, charts out there. Uh, for silver, uh, this has got the larger time frame, which is the monthly chart. Now, the monthly chart had confirmed a uh, sell the D point pattern last month. 
Um, I'll just have the, uh, the, the, the C to D leg drawn in there. But if price closes the month, that would be next Friday. If it closes above 3019, that tells us that uh, we uh, negates that signal and we're likely to head higher out there. Now, that's coming from the monthly time frame chart. Maybe uh, next week on Friday, we'll remember to take a look at that. The weekly time frame chart negated its TD9 count top. It's traded above oscillator and change line above the top of its profile. The weekly chart is bullish. And right now, the monthly chart is bullish, but the month hasn't ended. How about the daily time? Time frame. The daily time frame formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Let's open this up here, and it did that with that uh, Three River. Uh, did it with a uh, bearish engulfing candle a couple of days ago. Now, what price is doing here in silver? It's uh, trading at the top of its profile. This uh, unusual profile in that it only has a top and a bottom. That's not completely unusual, but it, you know, it doesn't happen that often. So the key level and the center and the bottom are the same thing. So if you were going to ask me, John C., where's the strongest support level on a move lower inside of silver? That's an easy question to answer. It's at 2642. If you're going to ask me, will that level hold if price pulls back? Uh, that I don't know. But we do know that's a strong support level. Is price going to get down there? I don't know. Right now, price yesterday pretty much closed on the top of its profile. And it's trading just above it right now. So what I'd watch at day's end, where does silver close? Does it close above 20? I'm sorry. Does it close above 3046? We're at 3050 right now. If it closed above 3046, it still needs to contend with its oscillator and change line at 3077. So let's call it 3080 or so would be the ideal place for silver to uh, close above because then that would get us back in. It would be neutral. Uh, therefore, on the uh, daily time, on the weekly time, the daily time frame, uh, because you'd have a rising price oscillator above zero. Uh, um, and uh, so, uh, you know, that's, those are just simply bullish conditions that would suggest getting back to the highs out there. But right now, I think on the uh, daily time frame, you've got to watch the top of that daily profile. If that fails out there, well, then you could easily be looking to move back to 28.64, 28.10 or so. So is it going to fail or not? When we look at the intraday charts, and the shortest time frame that I've got out here as we speak right now is the 30-minute chart. So let's open this up and try to get a decent view of where this is headed to. So right now, silver is testing its swing point from 2130 hours back on May the 23rd. That was last evening. So it's trading inside there. This is a 30-minute chart. There's still um, 13 minutes left in the session. But if price closes below... 3049, and we're 3047 and a half right now. If it closes below 3049, and I'm not looking at volume or anything, it just adds the idea that we might see silver head a little lower, maybe even test that low from uh, last evening. And that low, by the way, is at 3023 out there. So uh, intraday wise, it's not uh, doing what we wanted it to see on the uh, daily time frame out there. But that's what's going on when I take a look at silver. Is there anything else out here worth paying attention to? Probably the four hour time frame chart. So let's open that up. Why the four-hour time frame chart, chart Stevo? Because I believe that is a TD9 count bottom pattern. Yes, it is. And that went ahead and completed. Well, let me get my cross here. This is a 240-minute time frame. That completed. Uh, work with me. That completed at exactly uh, 2 o'clock uh, yesterday afternoon. So what you'd want to watch is that low. And that low is at 30.28. And the price closes below that. The TD9 count pattern gets negated, and the next area of support will be 2970. That's using a four-hour time frame out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at all of the silver contracts. Contrasting messages when we look at the monthly, although not done. Not really contrasting yet when we take a look at the weekly. It says, I want to move higher, but the daily right now issued a timeout. And so we have to watch to see where price closes there. So, John, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. Hector and Patty want to take a look at the IWM, and the question is, is this getting ready to head up towards the 240 level. Now, I don't know the answer to that, but let's see what the charts tell us. First, we have to find where did Stevie stick the IWM, and it's going to be right here. So with regard to the IWM, here's what we know. What we know is that the IWM itself confirmed a sell the D point pattern, and it did that two days ago when it formed that bear uh, separating line. What transpired yesterday was nothing more than a test of support, and support was the bottom of its profile, 203.28. Yes, it closed below that by a smidgen, couldn't bust them down, but now today what you've got is an inside bar. An inside bar typically means that the existing trend will remain. Which trend is it? Is it the bullish trend or the bearish trend? I'm referring to the fact that it's got a confirmed sell the D point pattern. So an inside bar would suggest to me 
that price would likely go back and test the 203.28 level way before it gets up to 240. And even to get up to the 240 level, what you got to realize is that there's a TD9 count top on the weekly time frame, March 29th. And that high is 211.88. That's the high that's more important right now. Uh, and so you've got so on the daily time frame, you've got a sell the D point pattern. On the weekly time frame, you've got a TD9 count top. On the weekly time frame, we're also right now trading below profile support. It would be better if it could close above 206.34. But if it closes below its green oscillator and change line, that's what it's testing right now. And that's at the 205.38 level. Then Hector and Patty, if it closes below that, odds favor a move to that 203.28 level. And if price really wants to, it'll go tackle 200.24. So I see this as headed up towards the 240 level. Not just yet. It hasn't given us those signals because of the daily and weekly tops that are in place. So Hector and Patty, have a fabulous weekend out there. Curious what you're checking off your bucket list this weekend. They checked off the Kentucky Derby earlier in the month. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Vic wants to take a look at MicroStrategy, ticker symbol MSTR. Uh, so uh, this formed a uh, sell the D point pattern. It did a few days ago, back on the trading day of uh, May 21st. It created that little dark cloud cover candle. A new profile formed the following day. Uh, price has pulled back and has tested a area of support. It's still trading above its green oscillator and change line, uh, which is at the 1525-ish uh, area out there. It's really 1521.77. So even though 
It is I got a top out there. I'm going to go with more of a neutral call, more of a neutral call because the weekly is trained above its green oscillator and change line. It does have a TD nine count top, but it suggests that it should move higher. So I think MicroStrategy is going to go target the 1740 area out there. 1815 it's not out of the question. That's the top of the weekly profile and the monthly chart for MicroStrategy is bullish out there. So that's it's got that sell the D point pattern. But so far, price has not been able to really bust through a key area of support, and that would be down at that 15, 13-ish type area out there. So, Vic, I hope that helps you out. Let's go take a look at Microsoft for Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. MSFT and what do we have here so what I don't have is any kind of a topping pattern I don't have this in an A to B equals CD to the upside the retracement from here to here was much less than a 0.382 retracement out there what we do have when we take a look at Microsoft on a daily time frame we pull it back is a TD nine count top but this is the level here Nancy that you really want to keep an eye on that's a March 21st high and that's at 430.82 if price ever closed above that that would be a bullish signal it suggests that we further we had higher there we could draw in some different a to B equals CD patterns. I'm not saying that this is bearish because it's not. Price is trading above. It's also in change line and profile levels out there, but you do have that resistance out there. And that resistance also on a month, a weekly time frame, if you could get a close above 4, uh, 430. 82 that would be a bullish outcome uh, right now in the monthly time frame price is testing the top of its profile also at 43082 so we're going with 43082 is a really key level out there what was that high of that TD9 count was that all 43082 that's the magic number Nancy not until price closes above that will uh, Microsoft be truly all out bullish folks thanks so much for all of your assistance this week have a for all of you who have served our country our sincere gratitude have a fabulous weekend and i'll look forward to being back with you come tuesday morning 11 a.m sharp have a great weekend and be safe out there folks take care